Welcome back to another video by the Canadian Home Painter. In today's video, I'm going to show you what I do when painting in a high difficult stairwell. Um, and just uh, for a warning, if you do not have the proper equipment and ladders, um, do not try to attempt this on your own. Uh, definitely hire a professional. Um, if you do have the proper equipment and uh, you are comfortable uh, working at um, this height, uh, then by all means, but uh, that's just a little warning. So first, um, I just want to show how I set up my ladders and I begin with uh, a coat of primer. Now, uh, there is some repairs to these walls, so that's why the, uh, the primer is used to help cover and conceal the drywall compound. Um, also, since the ceiling is white and it is not being painted because it is in it was in good condition, um, the primer helps to eliminate any of the previous paint that may have gotten on onto the ceiling or perhaps the previous paint isn't uh, very straight. Um, so the primer, can help to eliminate the, the color that was on before. But it also is great for uh, covering up repairs that are, that are done um, prior to the painting. So this ladder that I have, that I'm using, it can pivot onto the stairs, which makes it very safe and easy to reach up high, like uh, in a stairwell. So what I like to do is first work my way around with my brush and uh, I, I'm just using an inch and a half brush. Now you'll notice there there's a little hole that just where the tape was broken away. Um, just using some paintable caulking and smoothing it out with your finger is uh, a great way to fix something like that, especially when it's up against a, a, a textured ceiling in this case. So once that's dry, then I like to, uh, you know, go over it with uh, the primer. I do have this video sped up um, in, in certain sections faster than other sections, uh, but that's only for time's sake. It will be at least a half an hour, this video, uh, anyway, even with the time sped up, so uh, hopefully that's not uh, too distracting. But I just wanted to show the start to finish process in uh, what I do when painting in a stairwell and how I set my ladders up. So this here, I'm setting it up now against the wall. Uh, that's not a problem. Um, the The ends of the ladder don't mark up the wall, and if they do mark up the wall a little bit, it's easy enough to cover with the paint. And if you've watched other videos of mine, you'll know I like to feather out the, the paint after I work it into the corners. So you're just kind of bringing it down or, or across and just feathering it out so it's not so thick in, in the corner. Just using my other shorter step ladder to get into that section because it's uh, it's on the uh, the floor. I like to remove the wall plate covers, go around them.
with the baseboard. I'm uh, I'm just taking my time and uh, making sure I don't get any on the floor. Uh, but I do this every day, so it's not that challenging for me. Same with that little ledge there. Just with the brush, should be able to get a nice enough straight line. If not, you may want to use some tape along the, the top of that ledge there, but you should be able to, uh, if you take your time with a good brush, just be able to get a nice straight line. And around the carpet. Um, now this carpet is kind of frayed, so it, it was a little bit difficult. But once again, it, you don't want to go too quick, but just nice and slow. The best way is just to freehand it around the carpet. Um, I use latex paint, so it's, it's a water-based paint. If you happen to get a little bit on the carpet, um, I, I've always been able to just quickly wipe it off with a warm rag. Um, but this, I do move the drop cloth away just so I can get nice and tight into that carpet. And you do want to make sure you, you get a good brush, spend spend a little extra money in, and buy a good quality brush and good quality rollers. It will help you um, do a, a better job. Um, it is worth the extra money to, to get a, a better quality roller and brush. So here I'm I'm rolling the first section um, with my 10 millimeter lint-free roller sleeve, and I have a nice, good quality pole that I can extend with ease uh, just by uh, um, releasing the lever, and I can extend it quite far out, and it is a good quality one, so there's not a lot of give. Um, it's very sturdy because, uh, you know, I spent uh, quite a bit on it because I did want something that was heavy duty. But it's nice. I can just easily click and extend it out to the length that I need and retract it just as easy. And you just want to go nice and even, nice and smooth. Um, and, and also, it's you, you never should be in too much of a rush when you're doing a paint job like this, or, or any paint job for that matter. Uh, you just want to be nice and even, and just take your time. Um, you won't have the splatters that you would if you were to just quickly roll it on. Now, this is obviously sped up, uh, just for, for time's sake, but uh, I'm just doing a nice steady speed, and you don't want to put too much primer or paint on either and make sure you you really roll it out as much as you can before going back to your tray i'm putting one good coat of primer on and then i'll be putting two coats of the paint but there's no need to put it on too thick You will get a feel for when you need to go back to the tray, um, but you don't want to be just always refilling your roller um, because you'll end up putting too much. It'll be too heavy on the wall, and you can end up getting some some runs if it is if it is rolled on too heavy. Same with the brushing. You want to really stretch it out as far as you can, anyway. I also find that a good coat of primer does help with adhesion, um, durability. Even though this was previously painted with latex paint, um, it does help with the adhesion of the, the first and second coat that you'll be going over top. But because also, like I, I mentioned, there was a number of repairs. And if you just put paint over, there there can be uh, the chance that you'll see through the paint. Even if it is a primer and paint in one, you'll see through and you'll be able to see where those repairs were, where that drywall compound is. Where a good coat of primer, it doesn't take long 
and it really conceals. You will not, if the drywall repairs were done correctly, you will not be able to tell where they are on the wall. So some of these higher spots, you want to be extra cautious. Take your time because, um, especially with a textured ceiling, if you're not painting it, you definitely don't want to get any primer with your roller on it. When you're doing your cutting in with your brush, it's all right to get a little bit on there because you are trying to cover up the previous paint line that is against the ceiling and you will not see that. But if you were to hit the ceiling with your roller, um, you would notice that uh, that difference in color. And then you'll, you'll end up having to paint the whole ceiling as well, which it's not the biggest deal in the world. But if you're not planning on painting the ceiling because it is in good condition, um, then you just want to take your time. You don't want to go up too far. That's another reason why when you are doing your edging, you're cutting in, you want to feather it down. So I'm using an inch and a half brush, but by the time I'm done, it's probably down about three or four inches away from the ceiling. So I don't have to get right close to the ceiling with my roller sleeve. So I work away with my pole as much as I can. And then I like to, uh, you know, take the pole off the roller cage and, uh, and do the bottom section. But you also, you want to have a continual rolling. You don't want to do a section and then come back to it when it's already starting to set up. Because then there's a tendency that you will notice the starting and stopping of your roller. While it's still wet and it's somewhat more pliable to smooth out. Even though I do have to start and stop because I'm in a stairwell, it's, it's not possible to go right from the top down to the bottom. So if that makes sense, you just want to, once you start, you want to have it while it's wet, still be able to roll over it and be blending it in. Make sure your carpet is covered up with the, when you're, when you're rolling. Um, I, I have literally no drips. I mean, once in a while, you know, accidents can happen, but generally speaking, I, I don't have drips. I use very good quality roller sleeves. And uh, I just don't find that I get a lot of splatter. Here too, um, I, I'm using my my long pole, and I'm, I'm coming I'm coming down as far as I'm able to. But you'll see, I'm not going to allow it to set up or or get too dry because I want to be able to have that nice and blended in. So I'm going to take off the roll, the pole and uh, while it's still, still wet, I'm going to blend that in nicely and just uh, roll it with my hand because, you know, I, I only have like three feet or less in between in the hallway there. So it, it's just as easy to, to not have a pole. With the primer, you will notice a bit more of your rolling marks um, and your brush strokes. That's that's normal, nothing to worry about. The paint is a little bit different, um, so you won't see that as much, especially with your second coat. It'll it'll cover everything nice, and you're you're not going to see if you apply it right. You're not going to see all your starting and stopping or the 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 roller marks on the wall. But with primer, you will. It's uh, that's just typical of when you're putting on primer.
All right, so now it's primed, everything's dry. I'm going to just repeat the process that I did with the primer when applying my first coat of the paint. Now I like to use these little handy um, pails. They're, uh, they're, very, they're very good for, um, you, you know, there's a rubber handle you put your hand in and uh, it, it's nice on the arm, you know, not carrying the paint can. Sometimes I will just work out of the paint can if there's not a lot of paint in it. But generally, I do like to use these painting um, pails. They, you can buy um, the um, the liners for it, um, so it just makes things nice and efficient and easy to use and easy for cleanup, etc. So I'm using one of those. I have the paint in one of those painting pails, and I'm now I'm going to be taking my time now to get a nice new straight line. Now I find up against these textured ceilings, it's easier than a flat ceiling to get a nice straight line. That's just my experience. But still, you wanna just take your time. It's not a race. Um, with a good quality brush, you're, you're gonna be able to um, have an easier time uh, getting a nice straight line. So, you know, I, I can't stress that enough spending the money and, and getting good quality as opposed to some cheap brush or roller. Uh, don't try to save money in, in that area. Also, don't try to save money with the paint that you buy. Do spend a little extra. Buy the best grade paint, um, whatever brand you're going with. They will have lower grade that are cheaper, sometimes even half the cost. Um, my suggestion would be go with the, the most expensive that the brand has, that will be their best quality and you will notice the difference. Just for durability, longevity, washing, you know, all these things. The paint I'm using here is a flat, so I do find that the flats have the nicest finish. Um, there is ones that have an eggshell finish or a soft, um, glossy finish. Um, I will use a, a soft gloss in bathrooms or sometimes in kitchens, but for ceilings and walls, generally throughout the house, I, I do prefer to use a flat, a matte finish, so no sheen. I'm just having this sped up a bit just for, for time's sake, but um, you're really following the same principles every time. Um, the, the paint will be a bit different texture than the primer, uh, but you're just going to be doing the same thing, starting with your brushwork, feathering it out, not putting it on too heavy, your first coat is just a, a good first light coat which will cover and it's a good base over top of your primer. The second coat is, is the same. You're, you're going to put on the same amount but it'll just be the nice second coat will finish and, and just make sure everything is nice and covered. Paints that suggest that you only need one coat, I typically have not found that that is sufficient. So always plan on two good coats. Now I do have this sped up, so I'm, I'm not going this fast with my cutting in. And my brush is angled, which helps me also to get a nice straight line. I'm just working my way down around the the door casing and then also along that edge again now if you are having to paint and you have a, a an edge a ledge like that um, and you are worried about getting paint splatter then by all means put something over it like newspaper or or some type of paper um, to cover it up um, but I had no splatter or drips on it and I do think it's probably just the years of experience rolling and the technique that I, I use, but also the, the really good quality roller sleeves that don't seem to spit it off when you're, when you're rolling. But once again, it's, you know, don't, don't go too quick. It's, if you go super fast, obviously, you're going to get paint splatter. But if you take your time, then uh, that's going to really cut down, especially if you have a really good quality roller sleeve. So once again, I'm gonna start on that wall first. 
working my way from top to bottom. You do want to just blend it nicely so you're going over the same section, really making sure it's uh, all even, evenly spread over the drywall. Here I'm just resetting my my drop cloth so it's nice and uh, tight. Now what I do, because, you know, where do I put this big ladder? You know, it's going to be in my way. I, in this case, I went and did some other painting. And then when that first wall was dry, I'm just leaning my ladder up against it. It's, uh, it's not going to be a big deal. I will be putting a second coat. So if there is um, a bit of a mark or whatever, the second coat will take care of that. And now I'm just going to be working on the, the side walls. And here, once again, this is crucial that I don't touch the ceiling because this is the paint color and obviously that's going to really stand out if I were to hit it. So when you're going to the top, you, you just want to make sure you take your time and uh, stay away from it, you know, a good three, two, three inches. You want to go over top of where you cut in with your brush, but you uh, you definitely want to stay away. You don't want to have a brush up or slightly touch the ceiling because then you will have to, you know, be painting the ceiling when you weren't planning on it. Because with that textured ceiling there that you see, um, you can't be cleaning off the paint. If you go and start to, you know, rub it with warm water on a rag, you'll take that texture right off. Like with a flat ceiling, I guess you could probably just wash it off quickly, but with the textured ceiling, it's it's next to impossible. So uh, yeah, you just want to be cautious. So now I'm just going to lean the ladder up against the other side of that wall so I can uh, work on the opposite side. So, I mean, you know, to do it on your own, you, you will have to spend some money um, investing in, you know, a good quality ladder that you're able to pivot on the stairs. That's, I mean, depends where you live, obviously. In the States, you might be able to find it for cheaper because I know down there, you know, oftentimes things are cheaper than, than we pay here in Canada. But I believe I paid um, anywhere between 250 and 300 for that ladder. You know, my painting pole, that's another $50. So 300, 350, um, good roller sleeve, good roller cages, good paint brushes. You're looking at maybe another 30, 30, $40. So, I mean, and then drop cloth, another 20, $30. So it, it might be, worthwhile if you don't have the tools to um, see what it would cost for a painter to come and do this but I'm just showing you how I go about doing this I mean the latter you can use uh, you know on other projects around your house obviously um, but you do have to weigh that out you have to do some research see what it would cost and then see what it would cost to hire a painter in your area to just do the project for you or at least the stairwell because they will have the proper equipment but if you think you know that this would be useful to you as far as the equipment um i mean the painting pole you'll be able to use in other spots in the house the roller sleeves and cages you wash them out you'll be able to reuse them so the big thing will be the ladder purchase um but i mean most people in their homes, they, they can use a, a ladder like that uh, for other purposes as well. Getting up on your roof, they're great for stuff like that because it is also an extension ladder, as you see. So you can easily use a ladder like that to, to get up onto a, a bungalow or to reach, a, a, you know, windows on a second story of your house, for example, to, to clean. So, I mean, I guess if you think about it, what you would pay a painter, it may be, you know, 
a wise decision to invest the money in the ladder. You can do it yourself then, and also have the, the ladder and the tools to, to do other projects or, around your house. So I know this has been uh, kind of a long video, but I hope, hope you found it helpful anyway and, you know, give you an idea of what's all involved and what the best way to do a stairwell when it's kind of hard to reach. But like you see from, the, from this video, using the right equipment and the right ladder, you know, a good quality, one that can pivot and that you can uh, adjust on stairs is really so, so valuable to a job like this. It makes it very safe and easy to to reach the areas that you need to reach and also it's it extends so that makes it nice and easy as well uh, i just sped this up i'm just doing the second coat here just to uh show you i i didn't want to spend too much time um you know putting too much in this video but you just want to do the same thing go around um starting with your your brushwork and, and then moving on to doing your rolling. And like I say, the two decent coats, not too heavy, not too light, will just give you the a really nice finish. And at the end, I'll, I'll show you, just I, I walk around, just show you what the finished product looked like uh, when it did have time to dry. So um, if you do appreciate these videos, um, definitely leave a comment or a question if you have one and it really helps when you like and and share my video it helps my channel and obviously if you want to subscribe and, and notif be notified about upcoming videos I, I try to do a variety of painting videos I, I try not to make them too repetitive so um, to give you an idea with different challenging painting jobs around your house and and how I go about tackling them I have been painting for quite a long time, over a decade now, and uh, it is one of my passions, and I do enjoy making these videos. So yeah, feel free to leave a comment or a suggestion even for other videos. I know some subscribers have in the past, and uh, I've been able to make those videos. It gives me ideas of what people might be looking for. So I'm just finishing up with the second coat. Then I wait a couple hours just to give it a, a little bit of time, a little bit of time to dry. And this is the final, and this is how it turned out. Uh, really nice finish. The matte finish is a really good finish. And that is how I paint in stairwells. And this one was a little bit difficult just the way the stairs were. And uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed it and found it helpful. Thanks for watching.